You probably think this world is a dream come true, but you're wrong. Like five years ago, um, I was going to be a part of Coraline, the, the live action version of the film. And some time went by. They came back and uh, decided that they were going to make it into an animated film. And would I still want to do the voice of Coraline this time? And I did. You know, I thought that it would be so great and such a great experience. And here I am almost five years later, and it's finally coming out, and I'm so excited. My mother doesn't have buttons. <laughs> do you like them? I'm your other mother, silly. You know, the thing I just remember him being feeling so strongly about was that they be real, you know, not caricatures. And so for me, it just came out of the same choices I guess you would make if you were acting in front of a camera, uh, of, of what is this person's, you know, history, what do they want, where are they at emotionally, what are they trying to get. And so for each of these characters, those were the choices I made. And, and you know, ending in, the most rageful one, you know, was not, didn't come from trying to be the scariest voice I could ever think of. Although we did do many versions of the scary voice, some of which were too scary for the movie. You selfish brat! But it came from just this desperate, desperate place of knowing that she was gonna die and, and being so rejected and so disappointed that she'd given everything that she thought she could give. And basically, you know, Coraline was spitting in her face and that rage, you know, so finding the reasons behind the voice was, I think, what most of the work was. <laughs> When I first got offered the movie, I just had a few sketches and the script, and we would go through it together, and she wanted to know more and more about the story, and she was very intrigued with me being in it, and at one point, she said, do you think I could be some sort of voice? And a year later, we went up to Portland to just see the animation studios and meet the artists, which are just, it was beyond spectacular, the artistry and the studios. And I had to do some recording, and he said, I'd like you to record these couple of voices. So she did, and I actually went away, you know, and, and she was with Henry and he directed her, and we never knew if they were going to make it into the movie or not, and maybe just a month ago he emailed me and he said, so she's actually in the movie, and she was so excited. Wow. Hello, 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 hello. So she's a firefly. So now we love fireflies even more than we already loved fireflies. One boring blue boy in a painfully boring painting. Four incredibly boring windows and no more doors. Well, she's so adventurous and she's so curious and I do share some of those traits and there's some traits that I don't share. Uh, with Coraline, but that's what's great about, about acting. And, and especially with your voice, I think that there's so much you can do, and I don't think you realize that until you're forced to convey everything through your voice. That's really, really different, and I think it's great to kind of do things that you're not exactly perfectly comfortable with and kind of push yourself to somewhere else. Making up a song about Coraline She's a peach, she's a doll, she's a pal She looks just like me and the way she talks and everything. Even my mother was like, oh my God, it looks just like you. And I was like, she has blue hair, mom. How could you look just like me? But I guess like the mannerisms and everything are, are down pat because they videotaped me while I was while I was doing it. I think it, it's paid off so much because the, the movie is so incredible the way it looks. I couldn't couldn't have wanted it any different. Mm -hmm.